Welcome on in everyone. Let's do a little clearing of the space. And while we do this, let me make a few disclaimers here that are necessary. If you've not heard this before, all I ask is that you sit through and listen to it one time. If you've already seen it, then you can go on and fast forward into the reading, okay? Number one, I've got to say this for the YouTube moderators. This is for entertainment purposes only. And, you know, if they eventually want to take this down, then, you know, all my censored content goes to BitChute and Odyssey. If you want to know more about that, watch to the very end. I'll have information. Of course, links are down below in the description box. I also want to say, because this is for entertainment purposes only, do your own research, okay? I am not your fact checker, all right? You be your fact checker. Number two, those of you who are wondering my disposition, it's a good question that you need to ask of anybody who's given any kind of commentary. I am awake. I am not woke. I don't believe we're in Kansas anymore. If you think we still are, go, you know, that's good for you. <laughs> I'm not going to stand in your way. Believe what you want, okay? But I do have to say that I will in this reading discuss some things that you might not agree with and we're all adults so you can click away if you are not comfortable with people having a difference of opinion also i will use code speak here slang uh, and some of you might think that's silly but then again so is censorship so moving on y'all are free to disagree i'm a freedom loving aquarian so yes absolutely share your agreement and disagreement in the comments down below just understand that if you're going to cite sources from places like cnn you might get schooled. You might get laughed out of the comment section because, <laughs> as I said before, I'm awake, not woke. And finally, number three, uh, in case you hadn't figured it out, I am not your typical tarot reader. Um, if politics is not your thing, then please know I've got a lot of relationship coaching content here on my channel. I do relationship readings live every full moon, new moon. If you want to be notified of that, make sure that you uh, look at my stuff at the end to get more information. If you do like my political content, please know that I've got a lot more of that on uh, platforms where I won't be censored, or at least for now, I'm free to speak more openly about politics. Information will be at the end of the video, so stay tuned to the very end for that. That being said, let's get into this reading with a cleared space. Welcome on in, everyone. Welcome to the political tarot reading for the week ahead of June 27th. All right, I got the right deck now, finally. <laughs> I picked that other one up, and I'm like, something doesn't feel right here. <laughs> yeah, I picked up the secrets deck. Does that mean something? <laughs> oh, lots of secrets out in the world. Lots of secrets. Okay. And that big pile just came out, so... Um, and nothing else seems to be coming out with it, so <laughs> I guess those are the ones. So there we go, propaganda. Soros propaganda. Let's see, let's see. Um, this is at the foundation. Taurus. <laughs> banks money matters financial system strong and stable well i don't think things are strong and stable right now <laughs> but hey there there's a lot of propaganda going around right now indicating everything's great right i i heard that uh gregory Manorino was talking about how janet yellen um had mentioned this uh that everything's great everything's great just carry on don't don't pay attention to what's going on over here it's all good everything's good we got this under control Got this under control. What is the Soros funded? That that's an interesting question. Okay. Oh, here we go with more of this about Putin and Ukraine, and we got shit coins and Neptune and cultural Marxism. Oh dear. Let me arrange this and see how this goes. Okay. So I'm feeling that you know these cards essentially basically go into uh three groups okay although i certainly think there's a lot of propaganda going on right now having to do with what's occurring with the fed the whole banking the monetary system uh, but that's just my mind talking right intuitively i feel like we need to pull cards on these subjects and we'll see if there's any overlap because um that does come up from time to time and let me say i'm kind of disappointed to see this because I really want this to go away. I'm kind of tired of talking about that, if I could just be totally honest and upfront. But whatever, it came out because perhaps Spirit wants us talking about it in the week of June 27th. But let's find out about this propaganda, cultural Marxism, Neptune with Big Pharma, drug trafficking, 
fraud, lies, deception. Oh yeah, this is about what's being given. I'm hearing divide and conquer. I'm seeing dependency, dependency. Knave of Wands has a lot to do with communications. And it might have to do with um, really quick communications that come in. Uh, some people who have signed up to these tracking apps for, you know, Convid. You remember when they were putting in all these apps so you could report people and <laughs> uh, there might be something going on with that. Okay, Five of Pentacles, not a fan. I'm, I'm heavily getting an energy here of this having to do with the underclass, the underbelly of society and messaging coming out about poverty, lack, loss with that Five of Pentacles. Basically people who are on hard times. Yes, maybe the homeless. Um, people who are dealing with scarcity of resources, um, food shortages, things like that. Um, housing, housing crisis. Oh yeah, that's been going on. People worried it's a very mercurial energy just um, and again, next to this messaging, if it's not happening, it's just talk of people worried about it happening and what are we going to do to help the poor, help the poor, talk of that. Anything else? Anything else? Um, you know, I, I'm almost getting some kind of... It's in what's not being said, okay? King of Wands. Could be an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, but regardless of sign, this is an energy of somebody in a leadership position. Somebody who is maybe, um, you know, ordinarily I'd say this is somebody trying to overcome challenges, but the way he's looking away from the people who need a handout yeah, I'm getting some weird. All right. So <laughs> it's almost like this person in leadership doesn't, isn't really dealing with the poverty issues. They're looking away from it. They're conveniently unaware or uninterested. And I don't know why I'm getting this as their spokesperson who is maybe selling some story about how we're going to help we're going to be generous. We're going to give this. We're going to give that. Uh, relief, charity, whatever. But when it comes to actually looking at the, how far reaching this is, I just don't see it happening. What is the Six of Pentacles about? I think this has to do with, um, I don't know why I'm getting... Um, the elder population, um, those are those are in a dependency position, and I don't know if these are people who are like on Medicaid, Medicare, people who are on Social Security. Um, they're wanting. I don't know. It's, it's, I'm getting some message about asking for increased payouts or talk of giving some increased payouts. That's an interesting message. Ones. Again, we've got we've got several cards here about poverty and lack, and it's almost like I don't know. It's something being communicated that oh gee, I'd love to help, but I can't. Or here's help, but it's not actually help. I heard it's harm, and absolutely, if we're talking about you know big pharma, and now I'm being brought back to you know the elder population that was really targeted over the last two years by, um, you know, with the marketing, the big pharma marketing. What is this Five of Pentacles about? So I'm getting something about the working class. I'm also getting um, people who are in leadership positions with the working class, right? Like, so, for example, um, police officers, firefighters, um, they're working class people, but who's in charge of them? Like the police chiefs, the um, whoever's head of the fire department. I don't know why I'm getting some dichotomy here of 
rich and poor. The people who are in charge have the money and the people who don't, right? Big surprise. I'm not really telling you anything you don't already know. A lot of masculine energy showing up here. And I think this has to do with the homeland. I don't know who is, um, who could that be? Because I, I know Biden is a Scorpio. That's water sign. Tell me more about this energy. Because honestly, I'm not seeing the connection. Tell me more. It's a lot about money. I can say that much. Study income. Organizing accomplishments. Okay, so I'm seeing something also having to do with um, housing, yet again, a housing issue. Um, some of these people uh, could be, again, I'm getting uh, like construction workers versus the people who own these, like the home builders uh, versus their, like the home builders getting really rich while the construction workers who are building these homes, not so much. It's kind of, there's some dichotomy going on here and it's some kind of divide and conquer where like the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. Um, I am also uh, hearing to be careful about how they're framing everything, right? Like it's for your protection. Oh, but is it? Is it really? Because with the propaganda, and again, Neptune, it's this is very illusory uh, type of energy. Neptune has a lot to do also with corporations. Companies that have, you know, that are on the stock market exchange, multinational corporations and their investors. Um, Neptune can also represent inflation, drug traffickers, whether those drugs be legal or illegal. <laughs> As we say in the, in, the, in the Christian community, spirit of pharmakia. <laughs> That's what it is, spirit of pharmakia. And it might also have to do with the oil and gas industry. Schemes, um, idealistic expectations, easy money, people getting rich quick, and I'm really seeing getting rich off the backs of others. So with the rose, I'm seeing here about, okay, wh whatever is being given, the messaging, and I'm seeing a lot of communications, marketing, messaging, the way it's being crafted and delivered to the public, the way it's being framed is... Well, what we're giving you is here to relieve you financially. Uh, we're here to take care of you. We're here to support you when in reality, uh, there's something else going on. People are actually getting rich off of this scheme and putting other people in bondage. And I think if I were to see, you know, any predominant industry affected by this, it would be housing. And I'm seeing the working class most impacted. And I'm seeing possible food shortages as well. I think the takeaway message from all of this is be careful what you're hearing. Um, that, you know, sometimes the person who says we're trying to save you is actually not. And this is part of the cultural Marxism agenda that's been going on in this country. That it's all double speak. The people who have been crying racism the most are actually guilty of so much race consciousness that has divided this country. I mean, do you ever in your life recall people talking about race this damn much? I don't. And I was brought up in an inner city, Houston, Texas. I was brought up in one of the most racially diverse uh, schools in the nation. We were actually recognized in Time Magazine in the late 80s for being the most racially diverse school in the United States. And we we're all friends with each other. We got along. We lived door to door next to each other. And some of y'all might say, well, that's not how it is in the rest of the United States. But listen, I just don't in my 47 years on this rock ever, you know, recall it being this bad with all of this race consciousness. I mean, it's bad. It's really bad. And that's right. And all this identity politics that's going on, getting us to focus on, you know, gender, race, sexual orientation, all of this stuff that has been bringing division here rather than unity. Like, what can we agree upon? What can we agree upon? It's divide and conquer. Careful. The people crying racism might actually be the racists. They're the cultural Marxists. I'm going to move on. Um, let's talk about what's going on with the uh, banking industry. 
Three of Pentacles, Seven of Swords. Well, it looks like some people are coming together to um, plot and scheme. <laughs> you know, I mean, I hate to say it. That's, that's what that looks like right there, okay? Um, in order to get growth and expansion with their empire, okay? And I'm getting two threes there, which is interesting. So again, kind of a, a carryover of the last message, the rich getting richer. Uh, whoever is doing this with the seven of swords, uh, I mean, the most benign thing I can say here is, uh, are they, they've got business plans, they've got agendas. Um, that's, that's the nicest way I could put it. But it, a more darker expression of the seven of swords is covert actions. Somebody who is hiding their dishonor or this, their dishonor is hidden. Um, and it could be, you know, theft, embezzlement, under the table deals. There's a very lunar energy surround, like dead center, these threes, which are about getting growth and expansion. I'm hearing networks of people coming together. And this could be like PACs, you know, political action committees. Uh, well, we're coming into that, that time of year with the midterm selections, okay? People plotting and scheming how to fortify, right, the selection. Remember that? We didn't rig it. We fortified the selection. I think they're trying to figure out how to fortify the selection. Anyway, um, this could also be like on social media, orchestrating the censorship and suppression of agendas that are going on behind the scenes so that people don't really know what's going on. This might have to do with a convention as well, the convening of Davos. And I was for us for a moment, they're like, how is this factoring in? Because I'm getting a lot of concerted, a lot of people coming together, plotting and scheming here. How does all of this money come in? Well, now, it, even though World Economic Forum didn't pop out, I'm getting some kind of, did this happen during the Davos um, convention that recently occurred? This is a very Mars lunar energy. It's almost like the way that people are asserting themselves with a monetary system, how they're using resources, how they're channeling, funneling funds, gold reserves, um, that is being veiled. I'm not sure how these shit coins factor in. Okay, so what I'm hearing about the shit coin is okay, this is a strange message. So, um, you know, I, I have been getting these downloads recently, and I'm getting it again now that some of these cryptocurrencies have actually been created as a diversion or a distraction from people investing in things of tangible value, such as gold um, or Bitcoin, which is digital gold or Ethereum, which is the banking system is largely on Ethereum and they're trying to merge with Bitcoin. I'm getting the idea that some of these were created to confuse and distract people back to this lack of clarity um, platforms. Uh, whether it be social media platforms or crypto exchanges, I'm seeing that as well. I don't know. I just heard honey trap, honey trap to draw people in and trap them, trap their resources and funnel it else. That's crazy. Okay. I just went down a way rabbit trail. Take what you can get out of that because that that's way deep. What I was about to get into there. Um, this is, I mean, they're really being crafty here. Okay. With the Empress and the seven of swords. This is very crafty, like trickster type of what I'm doing to create growth and to prosper and to attract abundance into my life is through, at best, this very um, crafty, resourceful energy. At worst, we're talking about like theft, embezzlement, under the table deals, sleazy deals. And again, there's maybe something... Both of these are very Taurus centered. Look, it's Taurus and that's Taurus right there. Okay, so that's that's amusing. That's very amusing. Uh, Ace of Chalices at the foundation. Well, 
this this could be quite an emotional issue for a lot of people who have been uh, misled, led astray about the monetary system is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a lot of um, Davos World Economic Forum stuff, even though that none of that came out. And I think the reason why I'm seeing a lot of feminine energy here, again, this having to do with birth rates, this having to do with mothering type of energy. I'm also getting the timing of uh, the summertime, okay? So, this is, it seems like a really irrelevant point, birth rates, but when you go back to my inkling about Davos and you understand these people are very concerned about population control, um, then you start understanding the relevance of these two cards factored in with everything else. Especially when we're talking about resources and resourcefulness. I am seeing a lot of strong emotions about this as well. Let me clarify that Ace of Chalices. You know, this has to do with all over the world. You know, um, this is hurting women, it's hurting children, it's hurting birth rates. It is hurting um, people on a global scale. And they're going about getting growth um, through the legal system. They're going in and changing laws to make things legal that were once illegal and for good reason. Um, we've seen that happen out in Canada. We've been seeing that, um, like, with the Roe v. Wade stuff going on, by the way, um, which interestingly is popping up here as well like this is very roe v wade all right with what i'm seeing here but it's interesting that you know roe v wade has been firmly legal for how many decades now there's been over 70 million deaths incurred in the united states loss of life i mean we're talking about an entire generation actually a uh, couple two or three generations lost to this okay nobody has anything to say except post covid now they want to reverse it oh i find that interesting and, and you'd be surprised some conservatives are, are a little scratching their heads as well like well isn't this convenient after you know we started using their rhetoric on them saying my body my choice in response to the vax mandates now, all of a sudden, they want to go in and overturn that. It's, this is what they're, they, you know, and I, and I know conservatives are like, you know what? We, we really were pro-life, but if they do this, then what? That's setting a precedent in their minds to um, force people into doing whatever the government says. Although I would argue it's not the same, right? Because with abortion, we're talking about two bodies and with the VAX mandates that is one individual body so it's it's not entirely the same but in their minds it is and it's just convenient timing so um i don't know why i seem to go off on that bunny trail but the cards took me there so i'm following it let me see what this seven of swords is about you know it's all um interrelated is what i'm hearing okay um Again, you know, more more indications, like I saw with that last spread, that you need to be careful about the messages coming out because there's some lies and deception. And this is over a two-year time frame. This is about the direction. And I said, I, I just heard somebody saying, they, they say they're leading you down a primrose path. They're not. They're not. What is the three of pentacles? <laughs> Sudden wealth, cha-ching. Look at who's getting, uh, here's some more of this false stuff going on. Look at who's getting rich right now, okay? Who's getting rich? Who's getting poor? Why is the birth rate declining? Why? What are they doing in the court system to plot and scheme for certain people to profit off of certain things? There we are again with a gold nugget <laughs> there and there. So uh, I'm getting something about the gold reserves. I'm getting something hidden there. Contracts, again, legal contracts. Putting it in writing. And people are getting lucky off of taking risks that they probably shouldn't 
you don't really know what's going on here. Look, these are, you know, super wealthy people at high profile events. And there I go back to that whole Davos conversation about these people who have a lot of money. How are you making it? You know, how are you getting rich off of this stuff is kind of um, the question I think people need to be asking. Let's wrap it up with this conversation of Putin, Ukraine, Soros. Well, a lot of people are waking up to the um, Nazism over there. And I think it was funny that he, he said he was going into Ukraine to uh, engage in denazification. Denazification. <laughs> okay. And as many of you uh, know, those of you who know uh, Soros, he comes from that area where um, actually he has a history of involvement in the Nazi party. Um, during World War II, he was working with the um, the Nazis and is on camera. You can look it up. I'm not making this up. It's on here on YouTube. He says that, yeah, he, he doesn't deny it. He worked with the Nazis to take property from people um, during the war and that he doesn't regret it. He said if, it, if he didn't do it, somebody else would have done it. It was not a big deal. He doesn't see what the issue was. He was just doing a job. <laughs> the guy, the guy is really cold. Okay. <laughs> really cold. But let's see. We've got nine of pentacles. Somebody who has more than enough money here. But is that some kind of a crossroads and is going to make forward movement towards reuniting? That's interesting. I really feel this is representing Soros. You know, it has a lot to do with abundance. Usually Nine of Pentacles is represented by a woman. But here we see a man. And... This is somebody who has made basically a lifetime career out of abundance. This is somebody who's cultivated a lot of security for themselves in life. Uh, they are self-sufficient. They've been rewarded for their work. They could probably be their own bank. Okay. Um, I think this is Soros. It looks like with the two of swords, he seems to be at a crossroads in terms of how do I proceed? There's some difficult decision that has to be made, and I suspect it is concerning Ukraine and Putin. Uh, things might be stuck right now, uh, not, not totally getting the forward movement, at least on his part, because he's trying to avoid something. But I'm, I'm seeing with the chariot card, this is Major Arcana, this is Spirit stepping in and saying, uh, let's get this show on the road. So things are going to be rolling ahead. But within himself, I think he's stuck on something. Um, this right here is an energy where determination pays off. And somebody starts making some forward movement and progress on the matter. And I think the forward movement on the matter is with this three of chalice. It's moving towards reconciling reuniting is there going to be and honestly i don't entirely astrologically see this happening but the cards are indicating that for some reason he's stuck and spirit is progressing this forward anyway or he it's moving forward because he's realized that he's not going to be able in order for him to progress things in the way he wants he will have to do something he doesn't want to do. Okay. That's a weird message. But I'm getting here also social gatherings, events, people coming together, people reuniting. Honestly, I kind of am getting this like, that's his stuff. I'm getting that this is, uh, tell me more about this. Knight of Pentacles and Two of Swords. Nine of Pentacles, Two of Swords. Please show me. Nine of Pentacles. There we go. Well, it has to do with, you know, who he's partnered with, okay? Um, business partnerships, alliances. And I'll take this one. Something about a female, okay? And prior to that, I happened to see at the foundation 
on that lover's card. That privileged lady. Where is this? Is some kind of feminine energy around him? Um, it might be a significant life partner is talking him out of doing something. Uh, what are the chances? Could also be uh, somebody who is like a political uh, ally that is female, like Christia Freeland. Um, she's a World Economic Forum installed puppet, by the way. No, so no, I'm getting it's would be like a female that is part of the community. You know, yeah, I mean, I am sensing that this is somebody in Ukraine who is allied to Soros and his interests. Saying this is going to be a bad deal for us if, if things continue going this way. So I'm almost getting a backing off with Soros. What is going on with this? Ugh, I can take all of that. Let me try again with the chariot. It, it looks like there's going to be some type of progress made to reconcile differences. There might be some meetup or gathering where they make progress and discuss concerns about losses and things not going well in that country, okay? And I feel like it's more on a, um, yeah, this is like agreements, okay? I'm getting a lot about agreements here. And tell me more, please, about... More about this. Putin, Ukraine, Soros, what do we need to know about this? Well, I am seeing advancement with both of these cards. Somebody being recognized for... Hmm. There we go with the gold again. I'm telling you, gold, gold, gold. It came up really big in this reading. Um, watch what's happening with the gold markets. Uh, look at what is happening with the people who, you know, hold gold in reserve, like the BRICS nations. Russia being one of them. This is about um, putting plans together. And I'm sorry if y'all can hear anybody talking in the background. Um, investments, okay, banking, long-term positioning. Again, this is why I feel like there's some kind of stock stalemate energy with Soros because Soros is realizing that um, this is actually not going to benefit his investments in Ukraine. It's not going to impact um, their reserves. There is some conflict of interest with the Two of Swords. And the conflict of interest seems to be squarely involving gold. So I could see maybe like a coming together to talk about how do we stop the bleeding here, the financial bleeding, because it looks like there's a lot of deep concern. And I think it's among three parties. And I'm seeing the three parties here having to do with the homeland of Ukraine. There could be some meetup in Ukraine this week, this coming week about this, and it might not even be, it might be behind closed doors, okay? Um, people really have to ask themselves, why does Soros have his finger in everything? Why does this man care so much about what all these countries are doing because you can tie you can tie his funding to the BLM riots. Um, you can tie his funding to what's going on in Canada. You can tie his funding into Ukraine, Russia, all over the place. Why does this man care so much about controlling the politics and the monetary systems of a network of other countries? You think it's because he's a humanitarian? Please. Please, please. <laughs> All right, let's get some financial advice for viewers. Financial advice, please. And I'm filling these two. Partnership. Partnership is really becoming a big issue. Um, this is about allowing healthful, supportive partnerships into your personal life and career, and both parties benefit as a result. You are receiving help from heaven and from a person who brings needed skills and resources. I think this is going to be very key over the next 
year at least, okay? The challenge here is that so many people are vulnerable or financially insecure that they are afraid of being exploited so they won't partner with people. And we got a big problem with that, particularly here in America with a lot of, you know, exploitation going on and um, people taking advantage of other people to get ahead. And then, you know, every it's every man for himself. And the advice is this is not the way, you know, not to be hyper independent or codependent, but to be interdependent. So I think that, you know, it's going to take some discernment, particularly in the culture that I live in, you know, America, where we have so many win-lose dynamics. Everybody's afraid of being taken advantage of, lied to, whatever. Um, yes, this is the advice, but yeah, you know, in theory, it sounds great. In practice, it's, it's another, right? That's a whole nother video for another time. Um, maybe the first step is letting go of jealousy, okay? Envy about what other people have and this trying to take to get energy that I think uh, is coming up in a lot of people. Uh, this card says jealousy is an affirmation that you don't have something and the universe manifests exactly as you affirm. Let other people's successes inspire rather than frustrate you. If they can have it, so can you. Well, yeah, I mean, these wealthy people, here's the thing. You got to understand money is not disappearing. It's flowing. So it's out there. It's out there. It's just how do you get it? You need to ally yourself like all these wealthy people have done, right? Take a tip off of them. They're networking. They're forming alliances. They're pulling resources. They're being resourceful. They are cooperating. They're not engaging in this divide uh, and conquer rhetoric. They're doing the exact opposite of cultural Marxism that is being put on the populace, which is causing us to get distracted and thinking that our neighbors are the enemy, our fellow American, our fellow wherever you're at, um, Britain or Australian or Canadian or whatever, fill in the blank, Estonian, <laughs> you know, um, that, that they're the problem when in reality, what, what the problem is, is that we have been divided against ourselves and we got to get united. That's how we stand, right? It's a very timely message as we're coming into 4th of July in America, by the way. So ask for your needs to be met. And I think, again, this goes back to the, you know, cultivating the healthy interdependency where you are getting very clear within yourself about the value that you're bringing to the table in your relationships and what value you need brought to you so that there's a fair, equitable exchange. This card is saying God and the angels can come to you, to your aid, only if you make a free will choice to be helped. And it begins with asking. It doesn't matter how you ask God for help, but only that you do so. The same holds true with clearly asking other people to assist you. So ask in prayer and ask people. And I know sometimes that's difficult and awkward because, you know, you, you're risking rejection. You're having to be vulnerable to say, hey, I have this need that needs to get met. Can you help me? And yeah, sure, a lot of people, again, in this day and age, in this culture, are going to be like, Nope, got to take care of myself. It's all about me. You know, you take care of yourself too, you know, and and we have to like walk that stuff off and not be surprised when we see it. Um, you know, we need to instead see it as an opportunity to let people show themselves as being different, as being people who can be trusted, who actually do want to look out for your best interest. This is an opportunity for people to really set themselves apart from the rest and expect that a lot of people won't. Do not be shocked by it. Wait for it. Adversity reveals character. This is what's coming to me right now. Adversity reveals character. So step up, step out, and say, hey, I I see that you need help with this. I would love to help you. I also need help with something that you have. Do you think we can make an exchange here? Do you think that we could come together and help one another? And I really feel that this is the advice in these times. People are going to have to transcend the division, the invulnerability, the hyper-independence, the insecurities, particularly with the South Node in Scorpio, it's high time. And that's what I'm getting out of this message. We got to step into it. Hope I have said something to bless y'all and y'all have a great week.